I was recently lucky enough to be invited to an event called Maker's Retreat, which was organised by Matt Denton and James Bruton, where a bunch of creators all went camping for the weekend. We all got to hang out and talk about the various projects we were working on, as well as take part in some challenges. One of them being a bridge building competition using a set of three printed components, which was sponsored by Multiboard, which after the challenge and a few beers, we used the leftover components to build a huge 3D printed trebuchet. Oh. Hey! We also had to get creative and make custom masks based on various different animals, which wasn't really my strong point, but it was great fun to participate in. However, the challenge that I was maybe a little bit too competitive about was the 3D printed hook challenge, which was sponsored by Polymaker, so they supplied all the filament and set the following rules. Each hook must weigh less than 50 grams, and it must be 3D printed without assembly. So print in place designs are allowed, you just can't assemble multiple pieces. And it must be attached to a pair of 8mm shackles without disassembling the shackles. So it must have an opening large enough for the 8mm shafts. There were four teams competing, and each team had to go up against one another, almost like a tug of war, to see which design would break first. Now you can pause the video here if you want to think of your own design, and then I'll spoil the fun. My first thought was to do some research to see if anyone else had done this before. And funnily enough, Polymaker had actually run a very similar competition back in 2020. These were the top three designs where Stefan from CNC Kitchen had an interesting multi-tooth hooks loop, and the winning two designs were a similar wrap of printed plastic. But their rules were slightly different because they only had to prove that their design wasn't a closed loop. It didn't actually have to open in order to mount to the shackles, which adds another level of difficulty. In an ideal world, a solid loop would be the strongest design, as the tension on one side is balanced by the tension on the other, so there are very little bending forces. However, our design has to open to accept the 8mm shackles. This creates a C-shaped hook, which is far weaker as there isn't just tension in this vertical section, but also bending forces created by the offset between the upwards force of the shackle and the downwards force of the tension in the hook. Now you might assume the next best idea is to design a latch into the other side of the hook, which will greatly increase the strength over an open C-hook design, but it still has its weak spots. For example, each side of the latch is essentially a small C-hook in itself, and due to the rigidity of the print, it will be very difficult to open the latch wide enough for the 8mm shaft to pass through. So we'd either need to extend the length of the hook to allow some flexibility, or design in some thinner bending points to allow the latch to open, which obviously weakens the design significantly. So my idea was to design the hook as two separate C hooks, or maybe call them J hooks, where they overlap around the shackles. And yes, they are two separate parts currently, which would break the non-assembly rule, but that can be fixed later. Now this design currently isn't very strong, as the outer portions of the overlap are still subject to large bending forces like a standard C-shaped hook. But if we add some teeth between the two parts, it completely changes the force balance. So the tension from this side is pulling the C-hook away from the shackle, and the same in the opposite direction. But the teeth prevent this from happening and lock it in position, effectively balancing the forces. Also, if we get the angle of the teeth correct, they should bite harder with more tension. So the likelihood of the teeth jumping out of position is almost impossible, unless this section breaks which would cause bigger issues. Then to avoid breaking the non-assembly rule, I designed this 3D printed spring uh, in between the two parts, which allow them to separate enough to get the shackle inside, and then they lock together like so. Now I don't have a method of actually testing this hook, at least of the forces that we're aiming for, but I can 3D print a much thinner version that I can hopefully hang my own body weight off. This is a 2mm thick version, which is 10% as thick as the final version, and it was able to hold my whole body weight of about 85kg, at least until I bounced on it. But watching it back in slow motion revealed the outer hook actually slipped off of the inner hook because it was so thin, meaning it wasn't actually the design that broke. So in theory, the full thickness version of this hook should be able to hold about 850kg or more but I think we can do better. I want it to hold a ton. Fortunately, Polymakers supply some structural strength numbers on their filaments, and we can use this to do some basic calculations. 
Their PLA filament has a tensile strength of 52 megapascals when printed flat. So if we convert a thousand kilograms or a ton into newtons, we get 9,810 newtons. And if we divide this by the tensile strength, we get an area of 1.9 times 10 to the minus four meters squared or 190 millimeters squared. What this means is if we slice the hook through the middle, we need this total cross-sectional area to be at least 190 millimeters squared, which actually isn't that much. But to be safe, I'm going to double this area to increase its safety factor so we can account for any print quality issues or unwanted bending forces around the shackles. However, the cross-sectional area of the hook can't be too large as we still need to stay below the 50 gram limit. So what we want to do is design the hook as short as possible, but as wide as possible. As if we make the hook too long, we're just wasting mass in the wrong areas. The next thing I considered was making the hook hollow because like an I-beam, it's ideal to have as much material as possible in tension and compression. So thickening the design whilst keeping the same cross-sectional area should strengthen the outer C-sections and potentially take some load off the teeth. Now this is very easy to do in the 3D printer slicer as you can just adjust the infill percentage to remove material from inside the part. However, if you imagine the part with 0% infill, the cross section of the internals look like a box section. And these 90 degree angles between the side walls and the bottom and top layers could cause stress concentrations. So my idea is to design a custom hollow section in which I can fillet the internal corners to prevent these stress concentrations and then print the design as 100% perimeter walls. It was then just a case of putting the design through some finite element analysis to see the high stress areas and make adjustments accordingly. Like you can see here, as the stress values increase, it fades in a uniform manner throughout the whole hook instead of focusing on a specific point. There is a peak stress here, but that's because the simulation doesn't allow this section to rotate like the real world test would. So this is the final design where the spring section allows these portions to open to allow the shackle to be mounted and then the two parts click together to hopefully be nearly as strong as a complete loop. But is it strong enough? The test stand consisted of a two ton hydraulic engine crane and a 1.5 ton scale to measure the breaking point. You're going down. <laughs> no, you're going down. Now I didn't capture the whole competition, but if you want to watch it all, you can go and check it out on the Polymaker YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description down below, before I spoil the results. Basically, we had to print our design in three different materials, ABS, PTG, and PLA. And then we had to choose which material hook we would use, depending on the opponent we were up against. So ABS would be the weakest option, and then PTG and PLA would be pretty close. But for our design, we decided that PLA would be the strongest, because it had the highest rigidity, which would hopefully keep the teeth engaged. For me, the most interesting part of this competition was seeing the other team's designs, as they're all unique, and deciding which material to use against each of the competitors was a tough one. Anyway, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Polymaker's full video on the competition yet, we managed to get to the finals, where we were up against Yon's design from proper printing. 40, 50, 85. 90, and with the breaking force of 405 kilograms for a 50 gram piece of 3D printed plastic, we won. I couldn't believe we won the competition. This tiny bit of plastic and this design actually held up the strongest. But it still hadn't broken yet and I wanted to see where it would actually break. So we loaded it back into the test stand to push it to its limit. You know it can take 400 so I'm going to build up quicker. 150, 70, 200. 300. 400. 500 <laughs> 600 <laughs> 700 <laughs> 750 <laughs> 800 <laughs> 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 
Yes, I may have taken this competition a little too seriously, but uh, I really enjoyed trying to optimise this design to hold the strongest uh, weight possible. And like with any test, there's always more data to be gathered. Polymaker mounted a GoPro right next to the test stand, and it was filming at 200 frames per second, which still wasn't quite slow enough, but if we look frame by frame, it looks like the bottom half of the hook gave way first, almost like the teeth failed. But after collecting all the broken parts of the hook, I have a different theory. My guess is that it broke right here at the first tooth, as there is this tight angle which probably caused a large stress concentration. So that probably cracked in this direction, and once that released, the teeth disengaged, and the inner portion of the C-hook stood no chance of holding the weight. So if I were to redesign this hook, I'd probably increase the internal radius of this tooth to reduce the stress concentration and move some material from the side of the hook to beef up this area around the teeth, as the vertical section that's purely in tension held up just fine. Either way, I hope you found this video interesting. I had a lot of fun designing and optimizing uh, this hook, and I had a great time hanging out with everyone over the weekend. It was such a brilliant event. Uh, so if you want to see more about this competition, you can go and watch Polymaker's video, which will be posted right here. You can click on it right now and uh, view the whole competition. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.